morning we had torrential rain all day yesterday really heavy rain it's a lot brighter today so i am brought you up to the apartment to have a little look around and see if there's anything at all going on this November now uh, I still feel like a complete novice when it comes to growing vegetables I've gardened for many years growing flowers but as a serious vegetable grower I feel like a newbie still so for the past couple of years I've mainly just grown stuff through the summer and into the autumn and stopped there and just put the allotment to sleep for the winter but this year I really wanted to make an effort to see how much veg I could grow that would carry on through the winter and into next spring I really don't feel very confident about it. I feel as if I don't know enough about it. Um, and I, the stuff I've put in, I just kind of don't know whether it's going to work or not. Anyway, I've put the stuff in. I'll show you what I've got in. And um, you can judge for yourself whether you think I'm going to have any success or not. This is my first border in the allotment. It's uh, still looking very pretty, and very full of vigour and growth. I love it. This is my New Zealand yams or ochre. It's also got loads and loads of self-seeded borage in there, which I've just left because it's pretty and it's good for the bees. The New Zealand yams aren't ready until three weeks after you have your first proper frost. Um, what happens is the frost kills back all the foliage and um, it forces all the sap and what have you from the plant. They're like quite fleshy stems, these it forces them back down into the tubers under the ground this is the third year i've grown this i love it it's one of my favorite crops if you haven't grown new zealand jams before i would recommend them you get small i mean from tiny up to about that big small tubers they're usually pinky in color they are nutty and zesty and you just eat them in place of potatoes we usually just toss them into a pan uh, with some olive oil and put them into the oven and roast them but you can eat them raw and um, you can boil them whatever just like a potato uh, but particularly delicious uh, these are definitely something that I will probably always grow now I started off with 10 small tubers that I bought and each year I've just saved some just like you do with uh, potato sea potatoes I've saved some back and I've got now this great big border full and I've also got a couple of volunteer ones growing elsewhere so these I think will be ready probably sometime in December just obviously it depends on when we get our first like proper frost but we're coastal here so often uh, it can be later than elsewhere for, for getting a proper hard frost you know here we've got a border full of leeks I grew these on in a bucket in the back garden um, all through the summer I just multi sowed them loads and loads and loads of them um, and then when I had a border free I tipped them all out separated them all up and planted them into here um, I, I kind of don't know if they're going to grow I just don't know I've never done this before fingers crossed they will um, and I, I'm going to have enough leeks to feed an army the reason I'm, I feel a bit hesitant about whether they're going to grow is because I put them in so late. I would prefer to get them in earlier. I put some other ones in earlier and they are growing fine. But the issue I have with this allotment is it's a small allotment and I just am pretty limited for space. So I'm always waiting for another border to empty so I can get another crop in. Um, it's just not really big enough to be doing this, uh, you know, planting after planting after planting. Uh, but I'm doing what I can and this will be a good year 
to find out whether it's going to work, whether I'm going to be able to get the stuff in soon enough to get it started off. This is my strawberry bed. A few weeks ago, you might have seen me. Uh, this had become terribly overgrown with masses and masses of strawberries all matted together. And I pulled the whole thing apart, um, separated it all out and just took a few plants, topped the border right up because it had sunk right down. And it's replanted, just sitting there waiting for next summer. And hopefully I will get a good crop of strawberries there. These two beds here are full of brassicas. Um, I've got purple sprout and broccoli in this one. I've, they're netted usually, but I've just taken the nets off so, you, well, so I can see what I've got in here as well. That's the one thing I hate about netting is you can't see what you've got in your borders. Anyway, purple sprout and broccoli and swedes and cabbages in this one. The purple sprout and broccoli is doing fine. Uh, I've got some producing broccoli spears already which I was a bit surprised about because I was led to believe these these would um, crop in the late winter and spring. But as long as I get something, I don't really care when it is. It got The, the broccoli got hammered by the birds a couple of weeks ago and took off some of the main grown tips. So I probably have lost the crop on those plants. So I've got them netted now to protect them. don't seem to have a huge amount of success growing swedes really but you would think they'll be dead easy i've had these little wool collars around the plants for several months now to protect the plants when they were small from slugs but i think i could safely remove those now and they'll go on the compost heap actually i might be able to see if i've got anything growing they never seem to come to much my actual swedes they're just like slightly swollen roots Anyway, I will keep them growing right through the winter and hopefully they'll plump up a bit, I don't know. I've got the ubiquitous kale growing there and also some kaleettes over here. Of course, they're always successful. Anybody could grow kale, the trouble is we don't really like it and um, it's mainly for the hens. Certainly next year I will be limiting how much I grow. I haven't grown much this year. Just a little row, I think, just to keep the hens going when there's nothing else for them. This next border is the onions and garlic that I put in a couple of weeks ago. Hopefully you can see through the netting that I've got on to stop those naughty old birds pulling them out. But um, they've started to sprout quite nicely, so I'm happy about that. Got an empty border just there, but this one's full, isn't it? Looks great. I'm really happy with how it looks. I've got another crop of leeks in here. These ones are planted earlier than the other ones, so obviously they're coming on better. And I have actually harvested a few small leeks from here. And of course, they were absolutely delicious. I've also got a nice big row of sprouts here. Um, I've tried once unsuccessfully to grow some sprouts. This is my first crop I tried. And these are grown and there's little mini sprouts on them. So hopefully by Christmas, I'll have some sprouts on me on my plate. I have also got in this border a few very sad cabbages. The birds got them before I got the net on. I'm hopeful that they might be able to recover and give me some cabbages later on in the winter or in the spring. But at the minute, goodness, what a sorry state they're in. This next border, I've got some of this volunteer New Zealand jam in, which I've just left. And I planted some seeds in here a few weeks ago, uh, which have sprouted, I'll show you. I planted some chard going along here in a row. A little bit came up, not loads, but it does mean I'll have one or two chard plants um, probably in the quite early spring. They'll get a good head start by planting them now. I also sowed some perpetual spinach. Two or three of those came up again. 
Um, not as many as I would have liked, but still it'll give me a nice early crop, hopefully. And then I don't know whether you can see these little pencil thin ones here. This is the spring onions that I put in. Uh, again, hardly any of those came up. I, I sowed all across this area here, hoping I would get a good crop, but sadly it's just that. And the meat, but meat, New Zealand jams make up for it all. Look at them. Well, this final border looks quite busy, but the truth be told, there isn't a lot going on. I planted these beetroot quite late, hoping I might get a late crop, and I don't think I will now. I think probably the leaves are a bit tough as well. They're probably I might be able to put a few in the salads, but um, other than that, it'll be for the hens. This sorrel is a, per a perennial, which I'm pretty keen on the idea of seeing if I can get some more perennial vegetables growing in my garden it just seems to make more sense to me so this i mean i can still harvest these leaves now but this will come back with vigor in the spring so that'll be an early salad crop for me and also growing along here in the front i've got some spring onions and some chives the spring onions probably will get harvested now ish yeah they're big enough to come up now as opposed to leaving them to overwinter I retired into the shed, it's just getting too windy and it is pretty chilly because it's November. Well, as you can see, I've got my borders pretty full. I've only got one empty border in the whole allotment. I'm just looking out the door here, viewing the seed. I'll show you. That's the view from the shed door. So hopefully over the next few months, I'm going to be getting some swedes at least and cabbages broccoli what else will i get well my new zealand yams i do love them uh, and a few other odds and ends so hopefully that that's what you would call a success if anybody's got any advice on growing winter veg i would appreciate it as i say i'm three years into growing veg and i still feel like a complete novice anyway hope you enjoyed the video um, I hope it inspires you to get into your garden even in November and right through the winter months and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye!